Okay, this is the first in a series of tutorials for Microsoft Word. Um, obviously, Word is fairly self-explanatory, but I want to show you a few tips here that I think people probably don't know, or maybe just haven't really thought about. Um, first off, I'm going to start off here with this thing here where I have something obviously misspelled. I have to bring my resume to school. Um, basically, what's nice about Word is if you right-click on the, the word that's underlined, you can just choose the right word. Now, in this case, I've intentionally misspelled this. So, for example, if I wanted to really say, this is my resume, I, I would have to know how to do the E with a little, you know, accent and everything like that. So, I've tricked my program into correcting things for me. So, for example, I typed this on purpose incorrectly. If I right-click on it and go, instead of choosing the word I want, which is the top one, I go down here to autocorrect and then I go to resume. So you see how it corrected it. It looks like it's the exact same as what I just did. But now if I do this is my resume, it puts the accents in for me and I don't have to worry about it. Now it sounds kind of counterintuitive to spell things incorrectly on purpose, but here's another tip. If I was to say, you know, thank, thanks a lot, RJG, that sees it as initials. If I do RJG or oops, RGJ, ugh, I can't even say it now, I'm going to right click on that and if I go to autocorrect and then autocorrect options, I can actually go in here and do some auto text or in my autocorrect I can say replace RJG with Robert J. Griffith. Okay, so let's see if it works now. If I do RJG, it types it in for me. So it's another quick tip there. Another thing that's kind of helpful here is if you constantly write the same thing. For example, sincerely, Robert J. Griffith, um, 123 North Main Street. Obviously, you're not going to write sincerely and then put your address, but just go with this for a second. <laughs> you guy, California, 95482. And then your phone number, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's say you put this on the end of a lot of your messages. You can s highlight this section and drag it out here to the desktop, and it does this little thing. It's called a scrap. Okay, so now I've got, you know, I'm typing something, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I finish, I grab this scrap and drag it back in and it puts it in there for me. Now what's nice about that is let's say you write a s the same number of letters you know the same things in a lot of letters you know this letter is to confirm our reservation or whatever um, you can have that in a section and you can call this reservation confirmation and you'll just drag that in and stick it where it goes um, so that's another kind of quick tip alright um, Okay, now if I continue on here, um, let's say I've I've got a, here's a good another tip, under tools, something a lot of people don't ever see is this thing that says speech. Now if I click speech, you can see that it put a different word there. Basically what's happening now that I have speech turned on is that it's trying to type what I say. Obviously, it's working pretty well. This might be a good function for somebody who maybe has difficulty with carpal tunnel or, you know, maybe just isn't a very fast typist. See, that's pretty impressive, I think. All right, I'm going to go up and turn that back off. Okay, another neat little tip here is to make your text really pop under format there's this thing that says drop cap if I click that I can say dropped OK and you'll see basically now we have the each like that so I'm gonna undo it try it again I'm gonna go format drop cap in the margin now it looks like that so something that, you know that you can play with see what you like and yet another tool here um, under format that the people often neglect here is theme. Now I don't recommend this for people who are going to be printing a lot of this stuff, but if you're trying to do something really nice, um, you know, for example, let's say I pick on Cypress. 
basically what happens is when I print this, it's going to have this nice effect. Now, the one problem I have with this is that when it prints on white paper, it kind of, you have white edges and it's not really that perfect, but it's a nice effect. And you can select your text and bold it or, you know, make it a little larger, you know, change your font to something a little more fancy. I just have the basic fonts installed on mine at the moment because I'm going to do a font tutorial later. Um, you can pick something like that. And, you know, there's lots of neat little tricks that you can do in Word. But my final tip here is if you're typing in a web page, www.askgriff.com, it automatically turns it into a, a link. If you hit the backspace key, it takes that link away. Likewise, if you're typing and you're trying to say, you know, C colon and then put your little parentheses at the end and it turns it into a happy face, if you backspace, it takes the happy face back away. All right. Um, let's see. Another thing is if you put askgriff at gmail.com, it turns it into a, a link. So if you don't like to do it that way, and but you still want to have links, you can say, email me here, highlight it, and then you can actually click this little globe up here that looks like it has a chain link next to it, and that's called insert hyperlink. And then I can just choose either a web page or an email address. In this case, I'm going to do askgriff at gmail.com. The subject could be about your proposal. And I'll click OK. And so when somebody actually clicks that, it would open um, their email program and say about your proposal, and they could fill in the blanks. OK, now another thing here. Um, with you know all of this web stuff is that I can actually save this page as a web page for example if I do file save as web page it wants to know where I want to save it I can put it on my desktop it says a single file web page now that's probably what you'll want to use um, if you get a little more comfortable I prefer the web page HTML the web page HTML saves the text and the graphics in a separate file. Um, the single file web page puts it all together and I found that the one that saves it in HTML is um, a little more compatible. But now you can see that it changed some of my formatting and stuff. However, if I was to close this and down here you can see an HTML file that it just created and a folder that goes with it. If I was going to upload those to a web server, I could open this. And if I double click it, it comes up in the Internet Explorer the way that I set it up. Okay, so I hope that's a useful tutorial for you. Sorry it went so long, but I hope you enjoy it.